What's going on YouTube? All right, this video, the five tricks customers try to pull on you as a contractor or handyman, whatever you want to call it, um, to get free things, to get one over, to save money, pretty much all of the above. So let's get into it. All right, so I've been in business for a few, you know, a little bit of time now. So I've actually had some I've had some, I said some customers that try to pull some things and I wanted to share it. I do, I think I have a video or two on this channel about customer relations. So I'll link a couple of them in the description if you guys want to check those out. But this one is basically some of the things that I've seen noticed about customers and it's not all customers, but it, you know, you, you get your, your, the people who well, not, technically they're not customers so you don't spend money with them. But anyways, it, you know, you get the people who want to want something for free, want, you know, you know, insert whatever you need to here to get something to benefit them at your expense, really. So we'll get into it. All right. The main, the first one, uh, and it's, these are no particular order, but customers, I like modify, I modify all my contracts for that customer, obviously address, name, phone number, uh, email address. Uh, scope of work, all that kind of stuff. So every contract's, um, you know, modified to that customer. But they also, I've had a couple. I have a customers. Uh, one customer wanted me to add in their in the contract to them that we, me, take full responsibility for their pets when we're on the premise. So like, say if we let them loose or something happens, you know, we're we're liable for them. So obviously, I absolutely said no. So I was like, no, we're you know, absolutely not. And the job was pretty pretty large job I was like no it's you, the pets are completely on you if they run out you hit by anything something happens a hawk grabs your little foo foo dog so I mean that's just that's just nature right I mean it's just meat for that hawk right so not my problem anything like that so I told him that and it's it's in my contract we're not reliable for any of that as part of it it's you, you if you're worried about it then don't have your pets on the premise while we're working that's pretty much how it goes so obviously I nipped at them, but they asked, you know, they it was still fine. We still did, we were still doing the work for them. Uh, but it, you know, they, they asked, they want, they, they wanted that in the contract. It just said, no, no, absolutely not. So yeah, that's one thing they want to sometimes, you know, they, they want the, the contract to benefit them more than you kind of thing. So since it's my contract, it benefits me and also protects the customer. Um, so, but I want, I want it to be on my end because it's, you know, I'm taking the liability of working on somebody's property and I'm bringing the service to the customer. So that's how that goes. So, uh, next one, number two is dictating terms, uh, options, prices, you know, you name it, uh, a couple customers like, Hey, this is what needs to be done. This, this, and this, uh, we should do it this way, this way, and this way. And, you know, or, and then they'll be like, Oh, it should cost this. I'm like, well, how do you know? Like, even when people ask me for how much does something cost, I'm like, everybody's overhead's different. My overhead's completely different than somebody else's. So um, everybody has different prices. So it doesn't, it, you know, and if somebody asked me, hey, is, you know, $800 for this this service too much? I don't know, is it within your budget? If it is, then no, it's not too much. But if your budget's 400 bucks, if you got, you know, Taco Bell budget, but you want sushi um, or, you know, filet mignon, products, then guess what? You're going to have to either fork over the money or live within your means, live within your budget. So, um, I had a couple of customer, you know, dictating, Hey, this is what I need to do. This is what we, we need to, we need to run it through here. And, you know, you just have to, you know, remove yourself from the situation and, you know, look at it as a contractor. Hey, this is my ass on the line. This is, you know, what we have to do. This is what we're going to do. And in my contract, if it's not done the way I write up a change order or the way we, we, detailed scope of work they want to modify it we can accommodate that but they lose their warranty so uh as a for instance we were doing um a small addition and the existing part of the house is not level and it's not not only is it not level it's not even on the same like plane so there's multiple there's like an arc to it and it's not even the same level so i gave the customer options hey we can completely level the flooring, at least get it on the same grade so we can put down that flooring that they're super thin, you know, five mil, four mil flooring that they wanted <laughs> to use. And then we can, you know, go ahead and go ahead with their service and we're good to go with the warranty. They declined it. So there's no floor leveling. It's like, no problem. You guys 
can it you can decline it but i'm not warranting any of this because you've got multiple you got like three quarters of an inch uh difference over seven feet so they decided to you know forego it save the money for another project absolutely no problem you know sign a confirm conversation confirmation no warranty for the floor we installed the warranty and there's some small you know spots where it either cracked or delamin not delaminated but um imperfections so, so we say it is what it is it's I mean, you got thin flooring on unlevel ground on level subfloor it is what it is and they're completely aware of it and who knows they might uh they might pay me to rip everything back up and redo it the right way so that's that's still on the table so <laughs> that's hey i'll i'll not a problem that's a good change order right there so uh that's just as a for instance that's just how and you know some people want to save their money for other things and obviously dictating pricing you know hey this is this you know this should cost this much who says it should cost that much the internet like are you looking at somebody who's pricing it in florida as opposed to arizona michigan dead of winter you're at a condo that's three floors up and i've got to huck all this stuff up there i no, absolutely not don't let customers dictate your pricing you can you know they have their own budget absolutely and it's uh their job to find somebody to fit in their budget not your job to fit in their budget so all right next one i think it's number three is the while you're here quote you know like oh while you're here you know, can you just do this, 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 and this, and this, and all this other stuff? And I'm going to put in my contract uh, that uh, <laughs> all, uh, there's, you know, what we're only uh, required to do is what's in the scope of work. Actually, I don't think it's already in there, actually. I think it's, I got to read my contracts over again. <laughs> so, but but uh, yeah, it's uh, why you're here. No problem. I have no problem kind of doing that. If I had the time, it's a change order. So um, you want me to replace that light bulb that's 15 feet in the air? No problem. Change order. So I've got the ladders probably most likely with me. Not right now. They're not on the trailer. But I usually carry my ladders with me. Uh, we can take care of that. But at the same time, we're going to be compensated for the time. Uh, now, that's that being said, I'm not uh, I'm not saying don't give freebies out. Like if some if a customer wants, you know, just take this blind down or, you know, just be uh, something so small like, yeah, look at it from liabilities perspective. Like, okay, so what's the worst thing that can happen if I get up here and I fall and I go through the window? You know, like you gotta you gotta think of liability. But you know, do something small for a customer. It goes a long way for sure. It does. But at the same time, if it's costing me time and money, more than likely I'm not gonna do it because that's that's what we're in business for, right? Is to make money. So the while we're here, kind of you know that we get that a lot. And change orders are your friend. That's all I gotta say about that. Um, Negotiating price. Uh, that's a. It's, don't ever negotiate your price. Negotiate the scope of work. So, you're negotiating a thousand. You know, they, you, you gave them a bid for a thousand square feet of pavers. You want to do? No problem. They say you're about thirty percent higher. Okay. Well, we can do thirty percent less work to fit in your budget. So we can do instead of a thousand square feet, we can do seven hundred square feet. I mean, negotiate the scope of work, not the not your price, because your prices should already be where they need to be for you to make money and to stay in the business and to thrive. So. You taking time money off of that tells the customer, hey, now that you can negotiate with them, now everything's on the table. Like you know, they can they can question everything, and then also tells them that your prices, you think your prices are too high for the services you're offering as well. So don't do it, don't do it. Uh, that's just just don't do it. Uh, there's always in charge for your estimates. I mean, we'll go into that. It's the next one here, but uh, yeah, absolutely don't do it negotiate the scope of work not the price if i always tell like and there's customers like hey can you do it for a certain amount of money no we can't uh we we you know our prices are not negotiable uh if you wanted to uh you know if we need to fit in some certain budget we can critique the uh, scope of work maybe you don't need um you know 190 square foot bathroom you could do 90 square foot bathroom right so it's 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 all it's, it's all relative for sure so and the last one is free estimates. Um, don't do them. I know I do still do free estimates. It's not in person. Uh, the customers will get, you know, send me pictures, give me like a, a kind of a scope of work. I give them a general bit, like a general, hey, this is how much it is, you know, and then usually I don't hear from them again because, you know, they're, they're just they're price shopping or they found somebody else. So there's a couple bathrooms that uh, some people reach out to me about. I think they found me off next door or something like that. And they asked me, hey, we just, just need um you know the shower taken out and then a new shower installed and some drywall work or you know whatever 
And, you know, I was like, all right, I right, sent him off an estimate and nothing. No, I haven't heard back, try to check out, you know, just send him a text message. And that's, you know, I always follow up with the same type of con or the same type of contact that they reach out to me. So if a customer calls me, I call them back. If they reach out to me via email, I email them back, text message, same thing. I reach out to them back in text messages. And then I'll either, you know, ask them, hey, I can call you. We can discuss this, in, you know, in, via voice or we can, you know, we can just keep going with the email or text or whatever it is. So, which actually that's the only thing, email or text or voice. So, uh, free estimate. I don't, I don't jump to any uh job site for free anymore so customers i've had a couple of them like hey we need this this and this done uh one was a uh, like a mother-in-law suite like 700 square feet um he wanted and it was you know, it's in troy so it's about 40 minutes away from me 45 minutes away from me one way so an hour and a half and he wanted me to uh come out and bid it i'm like hey you send me that your plans if he didn't even have an he didn't have an engineer or an architect drop the plans he just had like a and decent for a homeowner, but you know, it's just, you know, regular plan. So he sent them to me via text. I just shot him an, you know, a rough estimate for square footage, you know, based off the square footage and the scope of work I needed from him. And obviously never heard from him, but at the same time, he was surprised that I wouldn't just kind of just come over there and just meet with him and waste my time because that's, that's not what I do anymore. So charge for your estimates. It weeds out all the tire kickers and, um, and I've had other customers that uh, say, you know, they're more than happy to, um, I, they, one, you know, I was like, Hey, you know, this is why I charge because it's, you know, if, if I'm bidding a job that's large, I mean, you can get five, six hours into an, uh, an actual estimate where you don't, you know, you want to be able to have your numbers correct because this is, you know, you don't want to be losing money on a job. So I I'll spend some time on it and that's neat. That time needs to be compensated for. So I think that's all I got for this. That's five uh yeah so we'll look forward to the next five we'll see what other customers have in store but those are you know they they happen all the time um you just keep you know you know your your quality customers and your ideal customer because they won't pull any of these tricks on you and there's some nice there's some good customers out there like and subscribe you guys i'll see you in the next video